Hey everyone, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Outward 2 is real! Nine Dot Studio have finally made the announcement they were teasing, and amongst the three games they announced, the last one happened to be Outward 2. I am beyond thrilled to this, especially since I was convinced, due to some of their previous statements, that we would not get any more Outward for quite some time. But I was wrong, and oh boy am I happy to have been. I also expected very few information on their projects, but they actually gave us a trailer with some pre alpha footage, and the CEO of Nine Dots, Guillaume, took about 45 minutes to answer questions right after the trailers dropped. I have looked at that and taken some notes, and today I want to make for all of you a quick summary of everything we know about Outward 2 so far. In order to structure the video, I am simply going to follow the four pillars of improvement they said they focused on in Outward 2 compared to the first game. Let's dive right into it. This is literally the first word spoken in the trailer. Outward 2 will take place 50 years after the first game. The people talking in the trailer are Calixa and Simeon, king and queen of the heroic kingdom of Levant. Calixa has been turned into a goddess in Outward, and as we can expect, a lot of the events of the first game will have consequences in the second one. Immaculates are going to be trying to blend into society in order to follow with the Soroborians DLC questline. You also know that the Levantine faction has reason and influence, and that they will probably play a big part in the next game. Guillaume has confirmed that Outward 2 is going to include way more story elements than Outward 1, and that it is going to be fully voice acted. If you remember well, in Outward, characters used to only say a few words before letting you read most of the dialogue. What you need. This is now over, and we can expect voice acting to be everywhere in the game. It has also been confirmed that exactly like in Outward 1, the player will have to choose between three factions, and that this choice will have consequences on the rest of the adventure. One last interesting thing, Outward 2 will cover new regions, they have confirmed that the game will be divided into four regions like Outward 1, but that these will most likely be different ones. It has also been confirmed that we will be able to visit the city of Tramontaine and its mountains, and for the people who really wanted it, it is confirmed too that we will be able to travel to Aboob. That means that the first region is probably going to be the Kar Abran, and the fourth one is more to the east and has been confirmed by Guillaume that this one is not on the map we have for now. This is all we know about the narrative at the moment. I personally hope that they expand on the unfinished storylines we had in the first game. Everything surrounding the origin and ending of the Scourge might be quite interesting and especially appropriate when we look at the map. I also hope we get to know more about the Scarlet Lady, the major antagonist of the Free Brothers DLC. Outward's gameplay was probably one of its greatest strengths and greatest weaknesses and it really divided people. Some really enjoyed it and others got repelled from the game by it. Amongst the very frequent things people said about Outward's combat is that it was clunky. Well, this is one of the first things Guillaume addressed in the livestream and something we can clearly see in the trailer. The combat in Outward 2 has been improved to be less clunky, more responsive and more snappy than in the first one, which should make a lot of people happy and help those who didn't enjoy it in the first game. Some big changes have been mentioned though. First of all, the game will have 16 quick slots instead of the 8 of the first game. I know this is a change that is going to make a lot of people happy, and it should allow for even more crazy combos in a game where combining skills has always been a major feature. It has also been mentioned that a lot more things should be able to be put in quick slots now for quality of life reasons. We also know that the game will feature the same number of skill trees and trainers as in the first game, so 8 skill trees for us. Some skills will make a comeback, we can see a fire sigil and fireball in the trailer, but they said they wanted a good balance between novelty and familiarity, so we should already be familiar with a lot of Outward 2 skills. It has also been confirmed in speech and images that we will get new weapon types. We can see in the trailer that dual wielding will finally be a thing in Outward 2. We could already use a 100 weapon and a dagger, but it will now be a completely new feature. The devs have said that they want to keep Outward outwardy, so a lot of things that were present in the first game are still there gameplay-wise. There will be no fast travel and no mounts. There is however a new feature, mules. We will be able to have pets that can carry stuff around for us. We can see that in the trailer in the form of a small boar. Mules can die permanently and need to be fed. 
I think this is a great addition, for this will greatly please the insane amount of hoarders amongst the Outward community. The game will still be two players co-op and the devs proudly announced that split screen will still be a thing in Outward 2. The co-op system in general should not be too different from what it is in Outward 1 and still works with the same principles, no shared quest rewards and a very simple hosting system available right after the introduction of the game. One last thing they mentioned is that crafting is going to be a bit different but definitely recognizable which is a good thing as Outward's crafting was quite interesting in the first place. This is going to be a very short part, as we do not know much about this feature, but I still think it is important to mention. Outward 1's character creation was very limited and most characters end up being quite ugly. This did not bother most people as they ended up wearing helmets, but in an RPG having a bad character creator is kind of a shame, so I am glad they are improving it in the second game. From the trailers, I can say that the character models do look better than in Outward 1, but we will have to wait and see how much they have improved, and it does not give us any information on how much customization will be available. In a lot of negative reviews of Outward, people complained about Outward's world being empty. I personally never had much of a problem with it, but I am not going to complain if they improve this. First of all, they said that in terms of scope, the map will be about the same size as Outwards 1. They really wanted to focus on quality over quantity. However, each map will be more packed with interesting things than in Outward 1. The increase in narrative elements should also help improving the immersion in the world. One very interesting and quite big feature they announced is the arrival of a full calendar. In Outward 1, some regions had big seasonal changes, like winter in Chersonese and Antique Plateau, or fog season in the forest. In Outward 2, this feature will be expanded upon quite a bit. There will now be a full calendar with months and seasons that will impact gameplay differently in every region. We do not know much more, but we can expect some tough winters in the gilded mountains of Tramontane. I also do not think I need to talk much about this, but the game will look better in general, I mean just look at the images of the trailers. I personally can't wait to venture here. Before I end this video, I quickly want to give a bit more information that did not fit in any of the big four parts of the video. The composer of Outward 1's music, Jean-Francois Racine, will make a return in Outward 2 and since I adore the work of this man, I am overjoyed that he is still around. Outward's music was definitely amongst its best features, so I could not imagine it being composed by anyone else. The game engine has been switched from Unity to Unreal Engine and what they have shown in the trailers is what they have been able to convert in the last few months. There will not be an official mod support on release but they didn't exclude working on one after. So to conclude, let's give some remaining information. There is not a release date yet for Outer 2, however the game can already be wishlisted on Steam and a playable demo will be available at PAX at 9 Dot Studio stand. I will not be able to be there since, well, I do not even live on the same continent, but I really wish I could go. It is important to say that Nine Dots announced two other games that are supposed to come out before Outward 2. I will probably talk a bit about these two in the future. That is all I have for you now. I hope that you enjoyed this video and are as excited as me for Outward 2. I will continue to update you on anything we have, so if you are interested, do not hesitate to subscribe for more. I'll see you again. Bye.